Hello everyone. In this episode, I want to show you one of the exciting new features that was introduced in Dash Studio 4.20 in regards to volume metrics. One was actually the VDB shader that I'm going to cover in another video. There's also Josh's video that I'm going to link to in the description that covers the VDB shader. But this feature that I'm going to show you today is in regards to volumetric ground fog. And that is a really exciting one-click option to add instant excitement and atmosphere to your outdoor as well as indoor renders. Let me show you how it's done. I've got a scene here that I'm going to use for demonstration purposes, and that is the Orbit Mansion. It comes in the Environments tab here. It comes with two options, the daytime and the nighttime scene. I'm going to go and load the nighttime version here, just because it has some lights in the windows. It might just look a little bit more exciting to what we're doing here. So this is a product that was introduced before we had proper volumetric features in Dash Studio 4.20 and it comes with its own fog shader. But I'm going to go and remove that so that we can just demonstrate how the current features in 4.20 work. Let me go and switch over to camera one here. I'm going to go and zoom out a tad. Just frame up my scene something like that so that we have a nice outdoor thing going here. Up here, if I expand that scene, I can see that one of these things is in fact the AM nighttime fog. So I'm going to go and remove that so that we see essentially a clear scene that doesn't really look like nighttime anymore at all. I need to switch this over to NVIDIA iRay so that we can see the full glory of the effects. I'm also going to go and collapse my scene tab here so that we, that we can see the whole viewport in iRay. Under the render settings tab here, under general, I'm going to go and switch my dimensions preset from custom to active viewport. And that's just so that I don't see any black bars on the left and the right. And then I'll wait a second and then I see a fairly clear picture here. I'm using the default ruins HDRI that comes with Dash Studio here in the environments tab and all the render settings are essentially at their defaults. And as you can see, we see no fog. We have no atmospheric effects at all. I can see clear reflections here on the shiny surfaces like the water and I don't really have any atmosphere here. I can see everything up until the distance and that's just how the scene comes in. And that's perfect this way. So to add some real creepy excitement to this outdoor scene, head over to the environments tab here, so under render settings environment, and then come down here to this option called the atmospheric ground fog. So matte fog is something that we already had in previous versions of Das Studio, but the new one that we have is atmospheric ground fog. They can work in tandem if you like. I'm going to go and just use the ground fog here and switch it on. And then you see some settings appear that we're going to talk about in a moment. And pretty much instantly you've got this Dartmoor creep effect hazing over the landscape here, which is very, very cool. So let me just go and disable that again, just so that you can see the difference. This is pretty much clear without atmospherics. And if I go and switch this on, then we have something like this. Isn't that exciting? I'm going to show you how to exaggerate that and really make it work for your scene. So in the background, technically, as the NVIDIA IRA manual tells us, this is actually a volume that is now put all over our scene and then adds this fog effect under the hood. And then Dash Studio exposes this in the render settings, which is great. So you have several settings here. You've got the color of the fog, so the ground fog albedo here. You've got the fog decay start, the fog density start scale. You've got the density start color. You've got the fog decay height, the fog density end scale. You've got the fog density end color and the fog anisotropy. So one of those things, we probably don't need to know all about these features, but some of them, they really spring out. And I just wanted to introduce you to that. So the fog albedo here, the albedo is a color that is essentially what color the fog has. A kind of a light gray works well because that's the natural color of the fog. But if I go and switch this over to something blue and like something really extreme, then I can see where these changes are happening. And this is a nice way to visualize what you're changing. So while you're working with it, if you want to see a change more dramatically, change the color. I'm going to go and switch this back to what it was with Control Z and change the ground fog decay height slider. So that's currently set to 91.44. But if I set that to something like 200, then watch what happens in the image. The fog appears to be a little bit higher. So now there, all the grass here is encapsulated in fog as well. If I wanted for that to be even higher, I'll just set that to something like 500. And then you can see that the fog is going almost up to the bird and almost up to the front entrance door of the Albert Mansion here. And that just looks so much more creepy now. 
It's a little dense, so we may want to thin that out. But in principle, I'm kind of happy with the amount of fog and with the height of the fog now. So that's the fog decay height here. If I wanted to thin this out a little bit, I'm going to have a look at the ground fog density start scale. The default value is 1, but if I set that to something lower, then my whole fog is going to thin out. So like say try 0.5 maybe. It's getting there. I can see a little bit more of what happens beneath the fog here. I might even set that to something even lower, like 0.1. There we go. I can still see fog is there, but it's much thinner than it was before. So yeah, this thinned out value, I'm even thinking that the decay height could be increased to something like a thousand. These aren't real units as in, you know, meters or millimeters or how high the fog is in the scene. It's just a matter of playing around with it and seeing what happens. So now it looks like the fog could be thinned out even more. So let me go and try that with 0 0.05. And there we go. Now I see something like haze everywhere. Subtlety really is key. So maybe 0 0.02 is even better. There we go. That is our atmospheric ground fog. If I wanted for the atmosphere to change a little bit, now is the time to take a look at the ground fog albedo color. So perhaps I want this to be not a gray, but maybe I want to make this a bit cooler. So I'll just not so much this blue, but I'm going to go into the bluish direction here, like so. And then we'll see how that affects my scene. So it makes it all like, look, it's a bit in the winter here, maybe even bluer. Could go a little bit bluer, but don't go over the top because otherwise it looks like a toxic spill here somewhere. And make sure the scene has enough time to render. So only as I let it render do I see more of a blue cast coming out here. So careful with putting too much in there. The other way would be something like a warmish color. If I mix, mix something like a yellow reddish thing in here, then I get this impression as if it was like a summer morning that's about to come out here. So a lot of fun that you can do with that. It's also subtlety is the key, of course, and you can definitely see the difference if I switch it on and off, then you can see how much of a difference that actually makes, especially as you let the picture render a bit longer. So yes, the main two values you want to have a look at are the ground fog decay height. If you set that to something higher, then you get more fog reaching out from the ground. And the other one is then the ground fog density start scale. If you set that to something lower, you'll thin the fog out. The other parameters, play around with them. They'll let you make the fog thicker. And there's some other exciting effects that you can maybe come up with. And then check it out, submit it to the new DAS 3D render contest called Turn Up the Heat. This is a contest that runs from now until the end of March 2022. If you're watching the video after that date, then I'm afraid you've missed your chance to submit your masterpiece. But yes, have a look at that. I'm going to leave a link in the description. It tells you what you need to do in order to be eligible for that. In essence, render a picture in DAS Studio with volumetric effects. And then you can snag up one of these three exciting prizes here. Wacom Cintiq 16 inch. That is quite a cool price, I gotta say. Second price, 500 bucks in cash. That is good. Third price, 250 bucks in DAS store credit. There's also three runners up that'll get 150 bucks in DAS store credit each. So a chance not to be missed. It tells you a little bit more about how to use the VDB files in DAS Studio. That's the shader that has been introduced also in DAS Studio 4.20. There's some setup instructions here. If you open this up with the plus sign, it shows you exactly step by step what you need to do. There's also a great video by Josh Darling here that shows you how to get started with the VDB shader. And that is really it. Oh, there's actually a little bonus freebie that you can pick up here with this code that I'm also going to put in the description of this video. Have fun with volumetrics, show us your best creations, and I hope I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.